One of the things you'll hear repeated today is that narrow speakers give a better soundstage and imaging than wide speakers. And when I hear something like that, it makes me think back to all the speakers that I've had built and listened to and to try to come to, you know, the point where I can say, yes, it's true or no, it's not quite true. And thinking back, I really can't say. I've always, like the speakers that I've listened to, the only real, okay, let me, let me say this. The only uh, time that I experienced speakers that didn't image well and project a good soundstage is when I finished building my console that I currently have in my living room. Now, part of that might be where it is, but I blame most of it on the surface in between the speakers because everything else is there. I use really good quality full range drivers that are um, properly set up in the box. The box is the right size. It's a vented box, so I'm getting good frequency response. And also it's being, it's being powered by well, a class D amp, which is good, but the signal's coming from a computer and on the computer, I have equalizer APO set up to act as the crossover for the speakers because they're single driver. And most people say, well, a single driver doesn't need a crossover, but yeah, there are some peaks and dips that you want to address. And so I did that with the uh, equalizer APO. I equalized the sound. Now it has a good phantom center, but it doesn't have any sound stage at all, basically. And imaging, you can kind of pick things out, but it's real blurry. For pinpoint accuracy, I think the key is to not have anything in between the speakers. That's been my experience. Whenever you got stuff in between the speakers that can interfere with the, um, the pattern of the uh, propagation of the waves coming from the speaker, I think that's what messes up the stereo image that most people think of as soundstage and imaging. So basically after reviewing my past experience, I didn't have an answer, not a definitive one anyway. So I thought I would set up an experiment in my listening room with the speakers that I already have. I could make the baffle wider by adding pieces around the top, you know, just scraps of plywood, hot glued together, and then use tape to seal up the gap around and then I could, you know, put those on, take them off and compare directly, you know, listen to both, listen to this, the speakers, which I'm getting a really good, big, full soundstage, pinpoint, accurate imaging. Everything is there with the, with the current setup. Put those things on and listen again and see if I can hear a difference. So I did that and I did hear a difference. But the difference that I heard was not in the sound stage and imaging, which were still just as good as they were before. The speakers themselves sounded different. And the reason for that is that I made that surface wider around, especially around the mid range. Okay. Which is in my instance, dipole as in the back of it is open. Now this has a big effect because a uh, speaker that's operating, uh, you know, in free air, basically, or on a narrow baffle, you're going to get a, an amount of cancellation on the side. You're going to have your forward going wave, and then anything on the side is going to cancel to a certain degree with the back wave, and it depends upon the frequency, right? So my mid-range is operating from 900 hertz up to 3200 hertz, so that's quite a chunk of the frequency range there. So what happened is they just sounded different. And uh, I really couldn't say exactly whether there was a substantial one, well, no, though there wasn't a, so I could say definitely there wasn't a substantial. I can't say if there was a subtle change in the sound stage or imaging because everything was still coming through. It just sounded slightly different. That's all. And okay, my speakers are dipole. You can do the same thing with yours if they're box, you know, take your bookshelves and widen them out. Uh, you're going to get a similar effect because what happens when you have a narrow baffle is the sound that's going forward from the driver 
is starting to wrap around the box and going to the sides. And when you widen out the baffle, more of it's going forward, okay, directly forward. It's kind of forcing it. It's acting almost similar to a horn in that it's, you know, uh, pushing the, the propagation of the sound forward rather than allowing it to fall off the sides and go, you know, go out towards the sides of the room. And that's going to make a change. It's going to make a sound differently. So the only way to do this fairly would be to build two pairs of speakers, one that's narrow using the same drivers as the one that's wide, and then configure the crossover so you get the same frequency response for both because the wide one's going to be, be different. Now, I didn't measure my, my setup down there. I just listened, but I know that the frequency response is different with the widened baffle because it's, it's pushing more of the mid-range frequencies forward and normally I mean that would be a good thing if the speaker was set up that way right but now I'm getting probably a peak in the mid-range where too much energy is coming forwards from the mid-range from the original configuration it was so for what it's worth I set up and did a recording of both so you can hear it for yourself the way I did the recording is the way I've done them in the past I didn't use stereo mic playing the stereo pair of speakers. Instead, what I did was I let one speaker play, let's say the left first, which would be the left channel. I recorded that with my measurement mic, and the measurement mic is situated about a meter from the speaker, aimed at the space between the mid-range and the tweeter. And then I moved that over to the, well, before I did that, I put the thing on, the hood, <laughs> to widen out the baffle, and I recorded that. And then I moved it over to the other side and I did the same thing, off and then on again. And that way I wasn't moving the mic. So you're getting exactly the same thing. Now these, th these, these clips that I'm gonna play are very similar, okay? And I only heard it in the room. I, I don't think it's possible to record you may hear the difference, but I really can't hear too much of a difference between the two. And I also put in the original uh, clip from the, like what was recorded, like what I played. But once again, I'm gonna be a little bit tricky and I'm not gonna say which is which. I'm gonna let you guess. To sum up, my conclusion is inconclusive, mostly, but I can say that if there is a difference there, 
it's very subtle, it's very small. So in general terms, I would say that that's not something that you should worry about. And I certainly wouldn't like, like keep, keep me from buying a pair of speakers that are wide because the idea is that you're going to lose your sound stage, you're going to lose your imaging, you're going to lose your phantom center if you buy a wide speaker. I wouldn't think that way at all. I don't think it makes that much of a difference. In fact, I've noticed the biggest difference with uh, sound stage and imaging and phantom center, although that kind of stays the same depending on the speaker, by moving them around, toe in, toe out, you know, where they are in the room. That's the biggest change right there for me. Anyway, that's the one that I've noticed. That's the one where I've done the, the most amount of tweaking while listening to try to dial it in perfectly. And um, width of the speaker, I think, is not really a factor. 